uh, in your contact list, okay? Okay, 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 so. okay. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much, the people that are joining. We are gonna go alive here today in HOD Radio Network in the uh, Facebook group uh, and at the same time sim simultaneously in the LinkedIn audio room. Our show today is going to be called uh, uh, The Most Important Leadership Skills Today to Become an Outstanding Leader in the, in the, in the next year. So let's deep dive here. Uh, before we start, thank you, Alison, for, for being with me here. Uh, so we're going to be waiting that the people join, a couple of minutes to people join. Thank you, the people in Facebook there. I see somebody uh, that is connected there. So let, let's give uh, uh, some minutes to start the show. Alison, you hear me clear, correct? Your contacts to let them know that you're alive. Okay, 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 okay. Go ahead. Let, let's wait some minutes. <laughs> uh, welcome, Mohamed. That is there. Uh, Mohamed, wait some seconds. There, there, I have some. Technical program, so now we're connecting to let people go in, okay? Give me a thumbs up if you're hearing me. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, give me a few seconds to start this. Hello, Nisha coming. Um, Nisha, give us some seconds that we're, we're waiting that we had some technical problem to, to connect and so we're connecting to let people go in. Today we're gonna talk uh, a topic that's really very interesting. Uh, I, I am, the, the people that don't, don't know me, my name is Jose Pereira. I have this podcast called Building Resilience. That, that what I do is that every week I publish in my newsletter that is called also Building Resilience, uh, topics related to leadership, top, topics related to um, uh, resilience. And what I do is that I deep dive in those topics every every week, every Monday, at this time, 8 a.m. in the morning. And uh, we try to uh, talk about these topics. And then after we develop the topic, like in a 30 minutes uh, 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 conversation, we open the mics so that people can begin to join to the, to, the, to, the, to the room. So today, because every week I try to select topics that really are meaningful to, to, to the people. They, they, they can, you know, think they are trending or think they are maybe are being uh, uh, in the social media, whatever. And one of the things that really caught me the attention the other day is that and um, we're all heading to the year end. People has goals. This is time, the, the time of the year that the people begin to revisit their goals. Uh, the, the thing that, that you had in the year, what happened? Did I, did I did it great? What, was I successful with my goals? So this is the time that people begin to make that reflection and try to push for the end of the year for the last three months. So when you, when you see this, you, there are many things that you, you begin to, to think about that. You know, what, what were your expectations in your business? What is your expectation in your job if you're, if you're a nine, seven employee or, or anything in your life? Yeah, you, you always are thinking in that. And um, one of the things that people that decide to, to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, or, or uh, have their own business, a, a startup, whatever, Maybe you be, you began this year, and and and, and you are uh, guessing and figure out how you can do it better next year, or maybe you're thinking to start a business next year. So when when this you're in this situation, you you are you are guessing and, and sometimes struggling how I can do it great, how I can really uh, be a, a successful leader, because 
any anything in your life is related to the leadership. Anything in your life. Because when you start a business or you have a business that is going on, or even in your family, you have to have those leadership skills because that's what keep you going. That that's what will keep you, uh, you know, uh, connecting with the people that 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 are, that are with you. That can be your family members, or can be your employees, can be your your management team, can be can can be anything. So one of the things that that, that people begin to think is so how I can become a, a a better leader for next year. So this is the topic that I decided to select this the, this week. So the, the, the name of the topic is the most important leadership skills to today to become an outstanding leader next year. So because what the, the question I have to make to myself is what are those skills that really I need or I need to improve to become a, a better leader next year or, or in my life? So, so it's a good time this year this year time to begin to think about it and 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 let's begin to to digest what are the, all, all those topics so i'm going to mention five topics the the way i i run this show i always try to uh, uh, deep dive in a topic in five elements why five because five are the most important five is is is, is the numbers of a hand and five is very easy to to remember so five topics, five skills that you will need to become a good leader next year. <coughs> Sorry. So let's begin with uh, mentioning what are the five skills. The first skill we have been talking here several times, but I will not stress more the importance of this skill, that is the having emotional intelligence, what is called the EQ having emotional intelligence. The second a, a skill that will be needed to you become a great leader next year is the adaptability. I have been talking here also about adaptability. <laughs> the third topic that you will need that we have talked extensively, and there are a lot of people that are always talking about this, but I will not stress more, there is that resilience. The third, the fourth one will be that AI knowledge, because we are in the AI world. And the, and the fifth one is innovation. So let's let's talk about the five, let, let's see what, what the, the five topics mean. And then we're gonna go to the question, okay, but what I have to do? What I have to do to have those five skills? We're gonna begin to talk about that. So stay here that we, we're gonna be talking about these topics. Before we continue, thank you for the people that are joining the room. So we have here Muhammad, we have Nisha, we have Sandra, Sain, Babakar, and we have here in, in Facebook, because we, this event, we're doing a live in audio room, and at the same time, a live in, uh, in Facebook, in our uh, Christian radio channel called HOD Radio Network. Thank you, HOD, for having me. Thank you, Daniel, for, for, for being a supporter. And, and we have here uh, uh, joining uh, Tagana, we have Memo, we have Daniel, we have Christian, we have Eliane, we have Andre, and we have Lilibek, and, and people that, that are connected alive in, in Facebook. So let, let's continue talking about these topics. Let, let, let's uh, deep dive a little bit on this. So the first uh, skill that we mentioned is the emotional intelligence, what is called the EQ. And, and let me talk about here something because I, I, I did a show where I, I typically talk exactly what's, what is the emotional intelligence. There is the EQ, that is the emotional intelligence, and, in, and the, the other is the intellectual intelligence, that is the uh, IQ. The IQ is the, the, the one that typically the people acquire because of, 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 of their, their knowledge, their intellectuality, and, and all the studies that they, they do. And, and I'm not gonna say that they're, they're not important. They are very important because that will give you the, the knowledge, the strength in, in your technical skills. 
and for example, if, if you are running a, a hospital, maybe you have to be a great doctor, you know? So a, 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 door, a, a great MD. But, but today, today, one of the things that are, are, are being more and more considered as important are the emotion intelligence. Why? Because the emotion intelligence is that, that, that exactly manage and handle the emotions. And here is where you can understand the others. And this is what will involve you to be aware in all the emotional states, controlling your responses and building strong interpersonal relationships. So here is where you connect with the people. So when you are a guy that have emotional intelligence, you are a guy that you will connect with the people. Because what, what are the things that, that, that make a person be, have a great emotional intelligence? For example, a person that is empathic, having empathy, a person that is empathic, a person that, that uh, understand the other, that try to put in the shoes in the others, that is a guy that will understand what the others are going through. Because remember, the, the company doesn't run alone. The companies are run by people. Even that today they're becoming more AI things, there always will be people running companies. So when you're, when you're running a company with people, is that there are people, there are human beings. So the only way that really you will connect with the people will be always, I, I say this every time, the only way that you can connect with people is being people. There is not another way to do it. The only way to do is being people. What means being people? Understanding them, knowing that the people have problems. You know, we are human beings. We can be a, a smart guy, a sharp guy. We can be a guy that does always everything okay. But one day is down because he's having a personal problem. You can be having a personal problem. You can be having a bad time. You can be having a, a, a financial problem. You can be having a problem in your family with your family members. You can be having a, a, a illness. You can be going to anything in your life. So that day you go to your, your, your business or, to, or you, you're in the management position. And, and if you're a good leader, you can perceive that that guy is having a bad time. When you have emotional intelligence, you will understand this guy and maybe you will call him like a friend and you will say, hey guy, what's going on with you? I, I, I'm gonna put here an example. I, I had, when I was in the corporate world, I was a CEO of a, of a, of a oil and gas company called Citgo Petroleum. When I was in that world, I remember uh, a guy that worked with me that unfortunately he, he, he had a severe cancer and, and he passed. He was a great employee, one of one of my top managers. And that guy, I remember the day they, they discovered that his cancer. He was one of the most intelligent guys that I had in my business. He was one, not only the most intelligent, he was one, he was like the connector with all the, the, all, all the managers because he was a leader. He was a true leader. So I used him a lot to connect with, 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 with my team. And one day, the guy came to me and said, Jose, I, I have to say that I, I went to the doctor and they discovered that I have a pancreas cancer. I remember that day um, was a very emotional because, you know, I, I felt him like he was a friend and I hugged him and I, and I said, I, I'm not, not gonna name here his name, I named him and I said, hey, you have here a friend, my friend, tell me what I had to do. And that guy, because he, he had to begin to go to chemo and all the stuff that you know that you go when you're going to a cancer. And I told him, you know what? Don't come to the office, work from your, your home. By that time, no, no, I'm talking about 2015, 10 years ago. So by that time it was not normal people working from home. Remote work, a remote job was not like today is after the pandemic. So, but I, as a leader, that I was empathic 
and I, I had, I believe, I have emotional intelligence, I told him, go and work from your home. And that guy stayed working from his home until he passed. But he did a great job. So that that's a, I, I want to mention that that's a very personal thing, but it's an example why it's important that you, that you have emotional intelligence. It's very important. Another thing when you have emotional intelligence is not only when you're empathic, when you are a great communicator. When you com com communicate with the people, and, and being communicator is not only talking to them, it's hearing to them. And, and when you talk, you, you have to have laser, laser focus uh, talking. So you have to talk exactly what they need to know that you want to put that message to them because it's part of your vision. But at the same time, you have to have the feedback, what they are thinking. Because remember, you don't have all the answers. One of the things that a leader has to understand that you don't have all the answers. You need the people, you need your team. Maybe you're the smartest guy and that's why you're the leader. <coughs> but that doesn't mean that you know everything. So when you have an idea, a vision, whatever, and you communicate your, to your team, to your employee, what you want to do, what, what is the, your vision in the long term. If you communicate that properly and at the same time you hear them, so now you have the feedback. And that will make you understand if you're going in the right direction or you have to make some, some corrections. So that's part of that, what the emotional intelligence is. Let's go to the second one. The second skill that we're going to talk in here is the adaptability. So what is the adaptability? You know, in this constantly changing world, today, be adapting is crucial. The adaptability is the, that ability to adjust your behavior and to approach when you're facing an, a new situation, a new challenge that will allow you to navigate all the uncertainty and lead effectively. So uh, adaptability is adapting to the changes. We are in a world that is evolving. We are in a world that changes every day. We are today in a world that today, while it's, it's true, tomorrow is another thing. And the day after tomorrow is another thing. And, and what you believe today, in three weeks, will maybe will be another thing. Because this is a world that's in evolution. And it's a worldwide connected world. Everything that is happening in one, in, in one uh, 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 part can affect you immediately. Something, for example... For example, today, unfortunately, they're running events in the Middle East that they're escalating. Everybody knows what's going on in the Middle East. I'm not going to mention here because I don't want to the, the, do this politics because people have their beliefs, but, but things are going there. And those things that are going there, unfortunately, are affecting the economy and will continue affecting the economy. Whatever happened there and escalate will begin to affect, for example, the price of the crude oil. I'm a guy that comes from the oil and gas. And every time there was going to any situation in the world, we were always evaluating what will be the effect of that in, a, in our business. So even we had a refinery here in the Gulf Coast, coast something that was going on in, in, I don't know, any country in, in, in Asia or in the Middle East was affected because maybe... The, uh, uh, in that place, there there was a, a, a port or a, or something or a refinery or something that immediately will affect what's going on in here in the market. So so you have to have that capability to adapt to the change. So that capability to evolve quickly, understand what's going on, and and, and move on. And take fast decisions, not fast decisions in, in, in the way that you don't think what you're doing. Fast decision consciously. Fast decision with all the elements, but taking the decision. Because one of the problems that many leaders have, and that's why many companies have failed, 
is because they have not adapted to the times. People that are here in the audience, I don't know if they, 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 they remember famous cases, for example, like Blockbuster. Blockbuster was one of very successful business in the in the 80s, maybe in the 90s. Everybody went there. I was a very big fan of Blockbuster. You know, go and 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 rent and and the the, the DVD the VHS and at some point that begin to be the DVDs and then you you went to your home and then you saw the movies. That was very nice. But the, the world was changing. The, the, it began to emerge, you know, the 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 streaming services. And when the streaming services came, what happened to Blockbuster? What 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 should have done the, the leadership in Blockbuster? What Blockbuster had had to be done is merge to streaming. But they didn't understand the sign of times. And what happened? That they failed. They failed because they didn't adapt to the times. Another great example is, is the Blackberries. I was a big, big Blackberry fan. I used Blackberry all my life. I love the Blackberries. By the way, in the corporate world, having a Blackberry was a must because the Blackberry had something that the other, uh, the competition didn't have, that they had a very secure uh, um, platform. Uh, so, so all the corporations and all the law firms and all the big companies always use, I believe the steel, there are some that use Blackberries. <laughs> they use Blackberries because it uh, was very secure, very safe. But what happened with the Blackberry? They didn't adapt their technology. And they begin to appear the Samsung, and they begin to appear the Apple, and today BlackBerry is gone. So th these are examples why companies need to be adaptive. Even if you have a, a, a business that you have been running all your life, a, a business model, you have to be understanding the science of the time and become ad uh, adaptive. Resilience. Well, I don't have to t tell too much about resilience because everybody always is talking about the resilience. In my particular case, all these people that are hearing me, by the way, let me say thank you for the people that are hearing me in in Facebook. I have here Andrea Lailvik, we have Ellen Layugan, we have Segaye Mamo, we have Kadiatu, we have Daniel, and we have Michelle and Peter. And we have here in Nisha Men, we have Sandra Both, Sain, Dr. Fortune. Thank you, Dr. Fortune. Wonderful for your post. I love them. Safar, Moses, and and being resilient. So the resilience is that ability, ability to bounce back for any setback or any adversity you're having in your life. It's maintaining a positive mindset no matter what learning from the challenges and staying focused on the long term despite any obstacle that you're having. I talk about resilience. I'm a leadership and resilience coach. That's what I do. I, 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 I recommend and coach business owners, entrepreneurs, and, and CEOs because I was a CEO too. And basically, what, this is one of the things that I always are, 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 are talking with them about being resilient. Because even that word, everybody's talking and talking. I went through a, a situation in my life that really I believe that I, I have a strong resilience. And, and you know, that, that for me was part of my life, the way I survived. I was a five years international hostage. And during my hostage situation, the resilience was, was my cornerstone. That really made me survive. Adaptability was, of course, part of my, 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 my cornerstone, but basically the being resilient because we were having a stream situation that, by the way, that stream situation today, I, I put it in my book. My book is called From Hero to Billion. And, and when, when you go to my book, you will see all the events we went through that made us become resilient become resilient because we were going to a lot of adversity, a very, uh, we were going to a big ordeal, but no matter what, we decided to stay focused. 
We decided to have a positive mindset. We decided to adapt to the changes. And, and we decided to face that adversity and bounce back and, and, be, and stay strong in body, soul, and spirit. So this is something that you can do it in your business and you can do it in your life. You can do it also in your life. So even if you fail in a business, anybody that can hear in this and maybe can hear it in the recording, if you're going to any struggle in your life, if you're having any adverse situation, even if you run a business and it's, if the business failed or is scrambling and, and you think that you have to close it, don't see that as a failure. See it as, as an opportunity to grow. So that's part of that. What being resilient is, if you go to the all the great leaders in the in the history, even in the Bible, if you go to the big leaders, always had a big failure. Always they have something that they lost. They lost their business. They lost their families. They lost their finances. They lost everything. But what made the difference? That they decided to connect to, to the grace and they decided to bounce back. So that's where it makes the difference. So when you this, take that conscious decision that no matter what is going in your life, no matter what are your circumstances, if you decided to continue going and move on, that makes you a, 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 a resilience leader. So that's what the resilience is. AI knowledge. We are in technology, my friends. It's the time of the technology. The AI came to, to be here forever. It's evolving. It's amazing what the, the AI is doing. I, I, I This morning, I was reviewing a, a tool that you put a prompt, whatever you want to put there, and then when you hit, it creates beautiful videos. It's incredible. You can see I want to put a lion with with uh, uh, um, wings flying in the mountain and will appear a lion with wings flying in a mountain. It's incredible and it looks really incredible. It looks really, really, really. So <coughs> AI came here. So a leader has to have AI knowledge. A leader has to understand that AI is no longer an option. If it's something that's come to stay, if it will involve you knowing the concepts, how you apply it, and have ethical consideration. This is very important, having ethical consideration. Because even, even the AI came to stay, there are some boundaries with the AI, that, and, and a leader has to understand how far he can go with AI. Because this is something that, by the way, I have many friends that talk about this today. What is the ethics in the AI? Because if you are not ethical and if you don't understand what are the boundaries between how far I can go with AI, you can be in trouble. So because AI, people think that came to replace human being. Maybe we'll replace human being in those mechanical things and some kind of things that are very uh, elaborated. But you will never replace the human being in total because always will be a human in the leadership position, unless we go to the to the thing like the sci-fi that the robot begin to lead the world. <laughs> that will be another situation. But it, always there will be somebody in top of the AI. But that person that is in top, that is the leader, has to understand how the AI works. So that's what is the AI knowledge. And the last one we're gonna talk because we, we're gonna begin to run of time is innovation. Innovation is fostering, creating, problem solving and thinking outside the box. I always laugh about that because I'm Venezuelan born. I came from a third world country and maybe people that are here and here that are from third world country. Uh, thinking out, outside the box, sometimes I say, what box? We don't have box. We have to think and move on. So here in the U.S., this is very typical when you talk about uh, thinking outside the box because the people always had a box, you know, and always are thinking inside that box and, and, and try to be different. My case, I can tell you, my friends, that I always are thinking outside the box because that's part of my culture. 
and and, and many uh, third world countries have to have that type of a, a, a cultural behavior because their countries have issues and you have to be always thinking how to manage many things, how to find the money, how to survive, how, how to do business with uh, all the things going on. So this is what means thinking uh, outside the box uh, under the uh, 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 situation, not only be adaptive, be thinking how you can change things. That's what will make you be an another innovative leader. So let's let's say, name it the five. So we had we said that the, uh, the skills that we need for next year will be emotional intelligence, adaptability, AI knowledge, in, in, in uh, and innovation. So my question now is how how I do it, what I have to do to become a, a, a leader with those five skills. Let's deep dive on this. Before we continue, I'm gonna say thank you for Peter that is joining, Kim, Thomas Payne, Moses, Safar, uh, uh, Saint, Sandra, I saw Steve O, they came and, and they left, no problem. Steve is a good friend. We have Andrea Laila Vick here in in Facebook. We have Ellen. La Yuyang, Seyape, Mamo, we have Kadiuti, we have Karom, we have Kim, we have Webb, we have Seraya, Kamara, Tonya, Hart, Nefaidi, and Danielle. So thank you that people are here. Here I'm gonna leave the recording anyhow. So those that didn't join now, they can always go to the recording. So what I had to do to acquire those skills. So for, for becoming a, a, an emotional intelligence, the first thing that you have to try to cultivate the self-awareness. Practice it in a daily way, daily basis, so you can track your emotion and you can identify your triggers. I can say you, to do this, sometimes people need help. Some people maybe will need therapy, so we'll need a therapist, or maybe people, People, people will need a, a coach, a, a mentor, somebody that will help them. So, so here comes, never do these things alone. Invest a little bit in yourself. Because uh, to control your emotion, maybe you're a guy that has some anger, yeah, you don't have to control your emotion, or you're having trauma events that can trigger your, 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 your life, you need to have some help. So depending on what, uh, what you're going in your life, uh, um, at some point, it's fair enough to have a therapist. I have my therapist every week because I went through a, this big uh, hostage situation and, and I, I went through PTSD events during months. My first six months I came back. I had two years I came back from my captivity. And when, in the first six months, I was in trauma centers and I was going to big PTSD event today. I'm for, uh, for Tulane. I'm okay, but I still have my therapist. I, I I don't have shame to say it. I have my therapist that she treat me every Thursday. I have every Thursday a session with her, and we became friends. And 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 it's normal. It's it's, it's okay. And and if you don't think that you need a therapist, but hire a coach. Have a coach. I'm a coach. That's what I do. So hire a coach that they can navigate with you. But practice the self awareness. You have to have mindfulness. Engage with exercise that, that can enhance your mindfulness. That, that will make you stay present and control your emotional response. So emotional, one of the things that, that, that the good thing of all the things that I'm talking today is that you can retrain your brain. Everything that you have going, today that science has learned that the brain is like a plastiline. So you can you can mold the, the 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 brain, and you can retrain it. So you can retrain your brain. If you're a guy that always are having negative thoughts, you can try to begin to cultivate mindfulness to have positive thoughts. When you when you retrain your brain and you practice a self awareness as mindfulness, now you begin to think different. Become an active listener. This is something that I still struggle. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes you, you you need to listen more the others. So you have to improve that interpersonal skill. Uh, 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 having actively listening during conversation. 
You have to have an open communication. Be humble and be open. So you have to build trust through transferring and honest communication. When you practice all this, you can become a better a leader with more emotion and intelligence. Adaptability. You have, re have to require to step out of your comfort zone. Try to think in another way. Take, take a step out of where you are and see how the things are going. You have to embrace the changes. D don't do what the Blockbuster did or BlackBerry. If the things are going in other direction, go in, 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 in the, the, embrace those changes. And you have to train your, the, the brain for change management. Very important. To be resilient, you have to grow your mindset. Cultivate a growth mindset. Set achievable goals. Very important because sometimes you get frustrated. You, you are stressed. You are depressed because you put our goals too high. And now in this time of the year, you think that you, you didn't make it and you feel bad because you didn't hit your business. And you're depressed. Don't do that. They try to put reasonable and achievable goals. When you put reasonable and achievable goals, maybe starting small and celebrate those triumphs. So when you when you begin to grow and, and, and hit the goals and you celebrate those triumphs, so now you, you are become, becoming more, more comfortable with what's going on, and that makes you become a more confident leader. I'm going to say thank you to the people that joined in the room. I have Michael, I have Brahma that joined to the room. And here in uh, the HOD, we have uh, Andreas that came, Grace, Antis, Wet Panta, Bishu, Bintu, Jason, Claritin. And we had also uh, Nefada, Caliste, Tonja, and Serai. So thank you, the people are joining. Again, we're gonna have this recorded. <coughs> now we have, we said that we needed to cultivate self-awareness. We needed to have mindfulness. We needed to have achievable goals and we needed to have a growth mindset. So now to become more uh, resilient, we have we said that we needed to have a growth mindset and we needed to have reflection. What what is the reflection? The reflection is that you know when you when you are having setbacks, learn from your mistakes, learn from your failures. So, so understand what you went through and how that will make you improve in the future. Because remember, when you are a resilient leader, you will never stop. If you have a vision, if you have a dream, you will pursue your dream. Remember, we all are here, creatures of God, that we are here because we have a purpose. There, there was something written in our life before we even we were born. There is a purpose. All of you will have a purpose in your life. Find your purpose and achieve and pursue a dream of that. When you find your purpose, you will always be, if you really understand it, you will be focused pursuing that purpose, no matter how much failure you have had, no matter how much setback you have had, you will always stay focused, bouncing back and going on, bouncing back and going on until you get there. So that's, that's the importance of the reflection. Because the reflection is the tool that will make you understand where you fail, what you have to do better the next time, what are the changes that I have to do, what are the adaptability and the innovation that I have to put in the, in, 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 in the equation. So that's part of, of the tools that you will need. You have to create a support system. I always say, never navigate things alone. Never do things alone. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that people do in their life, even in a, in a, a leadership position or even in their personal life. When the people are going through situations in life, sometimes they... they, they they create like a shield, they create like a, a cluster and they isolate and with their problems. You need to have a support system. And the support system, you have it there. Maybe it can be your family members, it can be your beloved ones, it can be your peers, it can be your management team, it can be your employees. 
And if you don't have nobody nearby, it can be your church members. I'm today part of, of, of a, a church where, where we have some support systems. I'm, a, I'm part of a group that is called Golden Heart, that we are, I'm 62, and I'm part of a, a group that are senior citizens. And, and we have a wonderful uh, uh, support group. Wonderful, wonderful. We, we, we always are supporting each other. And there are people even that are in the 70s and in the 80s and even in the 90s. So more elder than me. And this per person, when you see how they behave, they're beautiful persons. And, and if they're having some problem, we are always supporting ourselves. And, and if you're having any adversity, you maybe you have your, your couple, your spouse, or your, your husband, or, or, or your fiancé, or, or your kids, or, or your brother. It's always you will need to have a support system. That's important because that will help you go through that adversity in a better shape. Workshop and mentoring. I will never stress this more. Invest in yourself. Look for mentoring. Hire a coach. Hire a therapist. Whatever you need. But have guidance. I, as I said, and don't do this alone. Look also for support. Because the, when, you, when you go with a coach or when you go with a mentor, many things that we, maybe if you do it alone will take years. You will, you will uh, uh, stretch and, and it be, will become month because now you have somebody that has the knowledge. I'm going to say, I, I, I did a 35-year career in oil and gas and I went through my hottest situation. Believe me, today I have some things that I went through in my life that I can show anybody that they don't have to go to what I went. See, if a leader is going to in the wrong direction, I can tell him very clearly, my friend, you, you're going in the wrong way. Sorry, but you're going the wrong way. That's that. That's my job to to, to tell them what they, I believe they have to do. Because again, sometimes when you're in a leadership position, you 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 concentrate your effort in your in your business, but you lose what is your personal fulfillment. So there had to be a perfect balance between the 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 business success and the personal fulfillment. That's why if you go to my profile, you will find that. My webpage is joseconnect.com because I I talk that I connect that business success with the personal fulfillment because there is where you really have to go. If you are in a leadership position and you begin to climb in that ladder and become successful, don't lose the focus that you need to have the perfect balance in your life, that you have to connect your success in your business, but you need to connect with your personal fulfillment. Because it's a pity, it's a shame that you can be a business successful guy, but when you go to your home, nobody talks to you, your son doesn't talk to you, you have your marriage broken, you, you, you don't have friends, you're alone, you feel sorrow, you 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 are, are are a leader in your company, but you're a mess in your house. So, what would that make that? Do you do you think that a leader that's going through a situation is having joyful? No. So so what you have to do? You have to have that that balance between the two things. Very important. Very very important. Having that that balance. But to get to the there, you need help. Hire a coach. Hire a mentor. AI knowledge. Well, we said that, that this is a, a new world. AI is erupted. So what you have to do is the first thing, begin to be, be familiarized with AI. In my case, when, when Chat GPT came, I, I, I didn't know what was that. Today, I love Chat GPT because for me, Chat GPT is like a, like an administrative assistant in, in my life because I was very old fashioned. I always was dictating the, the, the letters to my assistant and then they came back to me. I corrected and then sent back to them and said, no, no, keep that, uh, put here this, put that here, there. That's what Chat GPT is. If you use it properly, don't don't use ChatGPT. He saying what you want to say. No, no, no. 
Tell ChatGPT what you want to say. You have to redact. It has to be your brain. It's you talking, not ChatGPT. What what is going to be ChatGPT? Put it in a good word. Doing a very good redaction. But when you do it, if you do it properly, it, it, it can be great. It's a great tool. It's a great tool. <coughs> I were talking about this AI video. Very, very good. CapCut. I'm, I am I am a big fan of CapCut. Today, my videos, all of them are, are done in CapCut. And if you're in a business, well, the robotic with AI is becoming stunning. So you need to begin to be familiarized with that. So you have to also uh, uh, understand where this is going. And that last one is going to be to become innovative. So you have to always be thinking how be better leader innovating. So creating your groups, brainstorming sessions to understand if there are going to be new ideas. I always said that those companies that in part of their culture have the, the, the incentive that if you as employee bring new ideas, maybe you have a monetary incentive that will make the people be thinking always how to do things better. I remember, I, I have mentioned this several times, that when I was in corporate as a CEO in Cinco Petroleum, we created a metric that was innovation, and we paid for that. We, we, we told the employees, all those employees that bring innovation, they're going to have an extra bonus. And, and people begin to be, bring good ideas, innovative ideas, how to do things better, how to improve the processes, how to have more profit. So, so that's part of the innovation. So, so create those uh, brainstorming sessions to, to, you know, to, to b bring more ideas. And, and I said, encourage new ideas. Put a, a, a metric, a bonus, whatever you want to do to encourage the people to bring new ideas. And design thinking workshop. You can create workshops to, to people to begin to put ideas there, have diverse collaborations. So put things in another way that the people think in a very different way. I'm coming here now to, if somebody wants to talk, because I'm coming to the end of, of this, where I say that I, I always talk about a good example of, of, of a leader that has cultivated all these skills and and I have talked about these guys in other shows but it's a very good example it's a guy called Satya Nadella he's he's the CEO of Microsoft Microsoft is a very successful company very successful but, but the question is why is so successful because his leader their leader there is Satya Nadella he's a guy that he's come from the India he's a very sh smart and sharp guy but he has cultivated all those five skills that we're talking today as part of his behavior. It's part of how he has input in part of the culture of Microsoft. Because he has been not only the CEO, he has become kind of a big, big brother of all, all, all the, the company and always is challenging the, 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 the company members to challenge the traditional software and become more and more innovative. And now he's evolving more for the AI-driven business model because this is a sign of the times. So Nadella has a very high emotional intelligence because he has been allowing, uh, the, uh, as part of the culture of the company, that, that growth mindset is part of the Microsoft culture, having a growth mindset. is very open to the communication and has collaboration across all the teams. He has help the organization to embrace the hybrid work model. So now, today, a, a Microsoft is one of the leaders in the hybrid model of working. Many of today's Microsoft employees doesn't go to the, to, to the, to the office. And they have had a, a lot of cut reduce in real estate because now they have empty offices so they, they, they can have people working remotely. This, this is the, 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 the technology, it's the network. So that's what they do today. And that, that's that's why he has been really become very successful, and he has promoted that that uh, that leadership. So coming to here, if somebody wants to raise their hand and and and, and make him any comment, we have ten minutes remaining. We can have a 
uh, if somebody wants to have uh, any any comment, you can raise your hand. We have here Sandra, we have Sail, we have Dr. Fortune, we have Safar, we have Moises, we have Thomas Payne, we have Kim, we have Peter, we have Brahma, we have Michael, we have Chester, <coughs> we have Dr. Brittany, we have Assad, we have Mohammed. And in here in Facebook, we have Misery, we have Kamara, we have Kim, we have Webb, we have Kadiuta, Corona, we have Segayi, Mamo, we have Ellen, we have Andrea, we, and we have Daniel. So, so when when I'm gonna make a, a wrap up here about uh, the importance of having this, this skill for those that came late, we have been talking about the most important leadership skills today to become an outstanding leader. And, 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 and I'm gonna recap here what this means. We're, we're heading to the end of the year. This is the, the part of the year, that the, the last quarter, when people begin to figure out what were their goals they set in the beginning of the year. Have they been successful with their goals? Have they failed? What happened? What, what we, how we, they see the, the new year, that people do new year resolutions, how I think my business is going to grow next year, what's going to happen with my life. So this is a part of the time of the, the, the year that people begin to think in all of this. So what I bring today to the show is what are considered to be the most important skills that a leader has to have for next year. And this is not me talking and saying, this is a, 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 a kind of a review. Harvard Business Review did a, a, a study related to this. Forbes did a study related to this. Reuters did a study related to this. Many of these big think tank companies has been studying this and they came up with these five skills. These five skills that today I'm talking today is not Jose Pereira saying, it's what it's gonna be the most needed leadership skill as part of that, that study for next year. And I'm, I'm gonna name them again. One of them is emotional intelligence. The other is adaptability. The third is resilience. The third is AI knowledge. And the fourth in it is innovation. We mentioned that the, the, the emotional intelligence is that, that is, a, 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 is a, a, when you, you have the intellectual, intelligence and you have the emotional intelligence, the IQ and the EQ. And, and I said that the IQ is, I'm not gonna say that it's not needed. It's important because that's gonna be your technology, your technical skills. If you're a manager in a hospital, if you're a great MD doctor, well, that, that, that will give you the strength that you're a great uh, technical in that area. If you're in a, in a construction company, maybe you have to be a great engineer. Uh, if you're in a software company, maybe you have a, a, to be a, a great um, 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 uh, networking or whatever technology engineer. So you need to have those skills. But if you, if you don't have the other skills that are the emotional intelligence, you're gonna be missing you're gonna be failing because those today are the most important. That is cultivating the empathy, culti cultivating the, the connection with the people as human being, cultivating the, the, the true communication with them, building trust, leading by example, uh, inspiring the people, become a visionary leader. All those things they have been talking in other audio rooms, these are the things that will make you be more uh, emotionally intelligent. Adaptive, the adaptability is, a, a, we mentioned that is that capacity to, to change no matter what the, the, uh, the situation are going, no matter what are your circumstances. You never keep, uh, never keep uh, uh, changing, embracing, and adapting those changes and adapting to the situation that are going. That's what's gonna make a great leader next year. And the resilience, bouncing back, my friends. No matter what is going on in your life, bounce back, stand up, and keep going. Keep going. And, and remember, I said it, and I'm gonna say it again. Everybody in the life 
has a purpose. Before you were born, you have a book written of your life. You have a dream that, that, that brought to you that you needed to go and find your purpose. You had to pursue that dream. You had to continue going no matter how much time you have failed. But you had to go and pursue that dream. That's what's going to make you a resilient leader. AI technology, we mentioned that it's the capability to understand the new AI, how it works, and have the ethical boundaries between what it can be ethical and what cannot be ethical. And finally, the innovation, embrace the changes, embrace the new ideas, do the thing different, think outside the box. So said this, and I'm gonna um, say thanks to the people that are joining here. We have Assad, Westchester, Michael, Brahma, Moses, Thomas, Kim, Pete, Safar, Dr. Fortune, Sain, we have Sandra, and we have here in, in uh, Facebook, uh, I have, let, let me go, oh wow, a lot of people. Uh, uh, we have Daniel, we have Lisa, we have Andrea, we have Ellen, we have Segaye, we have Kadiatu, we have Kim Webb, Serai, Kamara, Tonja, Nafade, Caliste, Clarotin, Bintu, we have Jason, we have Panta, we have Binchu, Autis, we have Grace, Aminta, Carbo, Silvia, Sia Queen, Kamara, eh, Susu Abu, we have Fable Comba, Michelle Martinez, Shelly Shell, Lela Hollenwitz, Radio to Radon, Instu Cesai, Fanta Comoro, Fatima, Agustin, Spain, and Daniela. Wow, a good audience in Facebook. Thank you, the people that are hearing and looking this alive in Facebook through the HOD Radio Network. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for always having me the opportunity to host this show in, in your radio station. And here in LinkedIn, thank you for the people that have been joining here. We're, we're coming to the end. We have one more minute, and, and um, I'm going to say something here. After what we have been talking, reflect. Reflect. Go, go back to, your, to, to yourself and see where you are today. What happened in, in your business or, or, in, or in, your, in any endeavor or any uh, personal thing that you, you said this year? Go back. Go back. And, and when you're going to set the goals of this year, first things, be reasonable. Don't set goals that are not reasonable because that will make you, when you are in this time of the year, next year, thinking that you failed. And sometimes it's because you did some goals that are not reasonable. So you need to be reasonable with your goals. Do baby steps. Do baby steps and, and, and celebrate those triumphs. When you do baby steps and, and celebrate those triumphs, you will begin to walk in the, in the right way. So said this, we're coming to the end, to this show. This is a one hour show they have in, in here. So thank you to the people that joined me. You can open your mics and say bye. It's a, it's thanks for being here. I am going to be waiting you next week at the same time, Monday, 8 a.m. Central Time. Building Resilience, follow my newsletter. And when you follow my newsletter, that's going to be the topic. I'm going to be talking this every Monday. So thank you, everybody. I always are talking about leadership and resilience. Thank you, the people that joined the show, and we're coming to the end. Thank you very much. Bye.